Now, talking about the latest developments on the political crisis in Algeria, doctors in the country are calling for mass protests against President Bouteflika. Algeria's doctors have called for mass protests against President Abdulaziz Bouteflika during the country's Independence Day celebrations on Tuesday, ratcheting up pressure on the ailing president who is clinging to power. In a statement released on Monday, the Independent Collective of Algerian Medical Residents urged medical students to take part. Algerians are desperate for new leaders to replace Bouteflika and other veterans of the 1954-62 War of Independence against France, which had colonised the country. The president, who has been in power for 20 years, announced last week that he was reversing a decision to stand for a fifth term, but stopped short of standing down. He has postponed elections and promised to adopt a new constitution under a reform plan. The changes have brought no halt to demonstrations underway for more than three weeks against a ruling elite viewed as out of touch with a population suffering from economic hardship and corruption. The 82-year-old Algerian president has rarely been seen in public since a stroke in 2013 and protesters say he is unfit to rule. Since returning from medical treatment in Switzerland last week, the president has been losing allies, including senior members of the ruling National Liberation Front party. In the latest blow to the ruling elite, leaders of 13 independent Algerian labour unions refused to support Prime Minister Nouradine Abedoui's efforts to form a cabinet. The Prime Minister planned to announce a new cabinet early this week. Newly appointed Deputy Prime Minister Ramtane Lamamra is expected to start a tour on Tuesday of some of Algeria's main allies abroad to explain the new political roadmap. The tour will start on Tuesday with a visit to Moscow, Algeria's most important military ally. It will also include EU countries and China, which has invested billions of dollars in Algeria, pouring cash into housing and public work projects. Protests have been mostly peaceful, and the military, which is expected to keep playing its influential behind-the-scenes role as a power broker, has stayed in its barracks. Welcome back. And joining me now to discuss the Algerian political crisis is Dr. Lakhtar Reitas, a North Africa analyst and author of Algeria and the Cold War and International Relations and the Struggle for Autonomy. Thank you for Dr. Ketas, thank you very much for being with us on this program. Now, let me start by asking you, how would you describe what's currently happening in Algeria? And if we look at the motives behind the protest, is the motive only the ailing health of President Bouteflika, or is there something more to it? Well, that has been happening in Algeria for the last four weeks uh, speaks for the numbers, speak for themselves. I mean, you've got millions in the streets. This, the latest, the Friday, this last Friday, was even bigger than the uh, 8th March, uh, March, which was by some uh, reports in the uh, regime, uh, put it at uh, around 15 million. They said that the Reuters says that the Friday one, this last war Friday one, has been the largest in Algeria's contemporary history. So numbers speak for themselves. People are the streets. Why are Algerians in the streets? Why are they mobilized? Uh, it's not only the uh, ill health of uh, Mr. Bouteflika, Blaziz Bouteflika. Uh, the Algerians uh, feel uh, a double insult. Uh, the president uh, was in power uh, for 20 years. Uh, it changed its constitution three times uh, and is promising another one with this national conference. Uh, should have been, as by the constitution, uh, removed from his uh, post uh, by invoking the uh, 102 uh, article because of, his, of the constitution because he's unfit for the, for the, for to deliver or to, uh, to meet his uh, duties, but uh, he was put in uh, captain place and uh, the 2014 constitution even made it more difficult to remove, uh, to get him out uh, from, uh, uh, to invoke the, uh, the, the article. It used to be 88, then it became 100. Uh, o, o, o two. So the double insult, as I said, is that uh, 
when people came out in the streets, uh, the message on the 11th, he said that he never had two days before the Constitutional Council came out to, to validate the candidacy. They said that the alleged letter of the president that he never had the intention to, uh, to run for president two days before the Constitution uh, Constitutional Council uh, approved the uh, validated the candidacies. The Algerians are asking who is running the show if he never had the intention to run. And this has been the fifth term, has been in the making for now six months, months at least. He's running the show. Some say that there are unconstitutional powers that are running the country. Hmm. And that's why the Algerians, so that's the double insult that uh, for the Algerians. Very interesting. Now, enough. another question which is probably on everyone's mind at the moment President Bouteflika was seeking his fifth term, not his second term. Why are the protests taking place right now? Why not before? Why now? Uh, there is the legacy or the trauma of the uh, bloody decade. Uh, then there is the uh, uh, Bouteflika served by the, uh, the regime, I mean, the Bouteflika regime used the uh, oil money. Remember, by the time he came, then there was 2003, the invasion of Iraq, oil prices rocketed, and they managed to use that oil money to buy social peace. Uh, in a piece I wrote in 2012, I said that the window is closing fast. As soon as the oil prices drop down, the regime will not be able to contain the protests and the, the contradiction within the system with uh, a trigger element will, 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 will bring people in the streets, and that's what we have been saying. So the, the, we have, in the last four years, the revenues, the oil revenues in Algeria uh, went down by half uh, to, to, 30, to 30 billion dollars from the high 60, 70 they had, uh, and that the, the regime has been not, not able in the last three years to satisfy them. There is that one, but there is also the, uh, the political aspects, their oppression, there is the, uh, the, uh, the public space is, uh, is, is closed, uh, f media is not free, and as I said, the, the mechanisms they put in place even to, to, to keep the president an alien person and the Algerian unable to, to, de to deliver and the Algerians couldn't take it enough. I mean, fifth term was an insult, so double insult. Okay, now when we talk about the international community and world powers in our world today, we still have not seen any strong comments coming from any particular country. And right now it's being reported that the Deputy Prime Minister of Algeria is expected to visit several countries, including China, Russia, and the European Union, to explain the situation. So could it be said that uh, the Prime Minister and his deputy are trying to gather support? For the current government, I mean, uh, I mean that's obvious. Uh, I mean, just two, three days after they got in post, I mean they they are flying to the to the uh, to to to, uh, to Moscow to the European capitals to uh, as a, as the uh, the communique of the foreign ministry put it to explain the the crisis, the political crisis in in Algeria, of course, and that's how the Algerian read it. The Algerians read it is that faced with this mobilization inside, they are getting. Uh, the uh, international uh, uh, supports, as I keep saying, there is a lot at stake also in Algeria, the geo geopolitical position uh, and the interests, the uh, energy, uh, oil, uh, secu uh, energy security of uh, the European Union. Algeria submits around 20 percent of, of, of uh, liquefied gas. Uh, stability in the Sahel region, Algeria borders six, seven countries in North Africa. So a lot is at stake and it should get the, uh, the, the, the international uh, uh, actors uh, worried. And how does the army play into this current situation? Do you think they will take any concrete steps towards solving the crisis? The army has been the elephant in the room. Um, uh, in the run-up to the fifth term, there has been harsh statements coming from the chief of staff, uh, uh, Gaid Salah, uh, uh, basically threatening anyone that defies uh, the, 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 the fifth term, a uh, retired general who ran this by that, uh, uh, was faced with uh, strong messages. And uh, um, by the time the Algerians poured in the streets that we have seen, uh, a sort of reformulation of the rhetoric of the army. Uh, basically, what has been said, the, the rhetoric is moving to from being close to the regime to being 
uh, to position the army as a neutral, uh, neutral force. And uh, today is a statement as well. The interview, the, the statement today uh, goes in that sense. So, so far, the army is playing to play this, uh, this, uh, this, this card. is saying that they have the, in the uh, last week, they said that the army and the people share the same vision for the future. Uh, today, the army said uh, that uh, the army is confident the Algerians can uh, um, overcome the current situation, the impasse. Uh, so, so far, the Algerians are now looking and waiting for uh, the, the next step. Dr. Gaitas, uh, when I was looking at the protest, one thing that caught my attention, many young people were out on the streets. So, when we talk about the ones who are protesting, which faction do they belong to? Well, that's one of the mistakes the army, sorry, the, the, the Botfliqa regime made in reading the, the, the protests. In the run-up to the fifth term, there was a series of civil war, monitoring of the, of the, of the 90s, the, 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 the bloody decade, remembering Algerians, even without even now warning on the, at the prime time on TVs, showing images of the horrific, images of the footage of the 90s, without even warning that children might be looking... Uh, just to, to, to put the, the, the machine in, 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 in motion to remind the Algerians of that time. What the, what, the, what the regime didn't get it is that the 20s, the 50s, the 80s, the teens and the 20s, the uh, university uh, uh, graduates, these were schooled in the Arab Spring mood. These are the ones who got uh, uh, 15 years, sorry, five years ago got to university or 10 years ago got to the high school. And they passed the last eight years of the Arab Spring, they passed them in their adulthood or in their university years. So they were watching what was going on and they haven't lived, they had, it's not, there is no reminiscent memory of the, of the blood decade. So it doesn't talk to them, it doesn't speak to them to, to tell them this is what happened in the 90s. And that's why we see that segment, those who are schooled in the... I think you brought a very important event. point here. Do you think this current political crisis on Algeria has similarities to the 2011 Arab Spring? In terms of the aspiration of the youth, it does. Uh, the, 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 the youth, I mean, they, they, they want to leave the, uh, the, 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 the same freedoms that they see around. They, they look uh, to the east, to Tunisia. The civil society is booming in Algeria. You need, you need, uh, you need the license to publish a magazine or to do a meeting. To, even a legal party needs uh, a license to uh, permission to get uh, a room to hold a meeting or legal party in the parliament. So there is that thing, but there is, as I said, the legal, the, 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 the psychological and the insults, the, the humiliation, deep-seated feeling of humiliation of the fifth term and the economic uh, the crisis, that, uh, the, 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 the hardship that Algerians started to feel in the last three years. Uh, uh, the, the, the government has recourse to uh, basically printing uh, uh, money without uh, any uh, funds, guarantees, uh, the Venezuela uh, solution, uh, and the people have been feeling it in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in, in their pockets, if not the teenagers, but their, their parents. So it was countries. something building up for a long time. Now, coming to my last question, how do you think this crisis can be brought to a resolution and how can Western nations help in de-escalating the crisis? The, the, the current crisis, the momentum is still ongoing. The, 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 the government, uh, with its initiatives, they have made, failed to, uh, to contain it. We've seen the prime minister a week ago today. They promised, uh, they promised the government in the next 24 hours or 48 hours, and it's a week now, and they haven't. Why? Because all the actors, most of the actors, the credible ones in the society, refuse to buy into the, the roadmap proposed by the, by the regime. On the other hand, you have the... Uh, authentic uh, opposition last night just they published or they, they released the roadmap for 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 uh, ways to to get out of this uh, of this uh, of this crisis and it has been supported so far by credible names from all spectrum of the, of, the, of the political spectrum in Algeria. You've got leftists in it, you've got uh, respected people like uh, Mustafa Bouchashi, uh, uh, the dean of human rights and lawyer in Algeria. You've got uh, uh, respected uh, opposition leaders. 
they've bought into the, the, the initiative and uh, it's, uh, it's making uh, news in, 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 uh, in Algeria now. And this is something that the Algerians gather start to, to mobilize around and to have it as their platform device in, in, in face the, to the, uh, as opposed to the roadmap proposed by the government that is, uh, uh, that is in this area basically right now. We'll definitely see what happened next. Dr. Lagdar Getas, thank you very much for being with us on A News. Okay.